Hey folks, I'm Mr. Lauer and I finished building a kitchen pot rack. Go me! If you haven't already, you should check out the first video in the series where I start all of the cuts and make all the joinery and all that cool stuff. In this video, oh, I have a lot to do. I have to finish cutting the joinery, assembling the project, painting this thing with some hooks, spray paint, fire, and mounting the whole thing on the wall. Oh, and uh, you're gonna wanna stick around to see me do this custom oil rubbed bronze finish for the metal hooks. It's pretty cool. So, yep, let's, let's move on, let's do this. I previously drilled out the majority of the material with my drill press. Now I'm using a really, really sharp chisel to chip away the rest of the angle that I'm looking for. To finish off the joinery, this mortise needs to be angled at 45 degrees because it's gonna be there for the center support, which also comes in at an angle. So things have to match a little bit. Of course, nothing goes perfectly with my projects. So you can see where I ended up having to recut the angle. It still doesn't really fit exactly right, but it will fit, it'll be sturdy, and uh, you know, better luck next time. For the braces, I decided on the fly to make a small cutout, which I feel will complement the angled theme of this project. To chamfer the edges, I switched between using a block plane at about a 45 degree angle and a chisel so that I can get into those corners where the block plane can't reach. I'm a big fan of chamfering edges of joinery. That's the part where I'm knocking off the corners. That helps to highlight the joints and, uh, in my humble opinion, the skill and effort that goes into making them. Maybe it's a weird flex, but hey, it makes me happy, so I'm gonna go with it. I think, I think we're doing it right. <laughs> okay, well, it's supposed to go on this side because this angles up that way. Yeah. Okay, see, that's what we call a practice run. Assembly is done piece by piece with glue and clamps. The only screws that I put in this project are the three that I used to attach that front rail to the supports. They're really only there to hold it together while the glue dries. A piece of half inch Baltic birch plywood acts as both a top shelf and also helps to keep the entire project square once it's glued on top. about coping saw is I can turn it so my blade is facing this way but this bar is facing this way. I use the trim to create a small raised lip, which will provide just a little bit of protection from objects accidentally sliding off the exposed shelf. When you live in an earthquake prone area like I do, safety is kind of a big deal. I can do a big zoom out. In terms of design, the Cove profile adds a bit of decor and contrast to all those sharp angles. In my opinion, it makes the project feel just a little bit more finished. 
My least favorite part of any project is painting, so let's skip that. These are the hooks I'm going to use. I have kind of a style issue here. These hooks are bright silvery, so I'm going to end up having to paint them. Since they are shiny, I am going to have to sand them so that the spray paint is going to stick better. Did I say I hated painting? I really meant I hated sanding. Yeah, sanding's no fun. So I experimented a little bit with layering wet spray paint and the results came out quite nice. For this look, I started with orange and gray and then I layered on a thick coat of black. To get that oil rubbed look, I used a gloved finger to gently swirl the paint, which creates these orangey gray streaks in the black paint. It's not a perfect recreation of the look, but from a distance and for the price, this technique is really hard to beat. I made sure to space the eye hooks about six inches apart, and this is very important. I pre-drilled all of my holes so I don't risk splitting the wood. To make sure the holes are drilled straight, I made a small guide block which helped out a lot in keeping everything consistent. Now it's finished and ready to go on the wall. I made sure to mark the wall where the framing studs are, as well as a level line at the height where I want to mount the project. When I originally designed this, I took advantage of the fact that most houses here use a standard 16 inch on center stud spacing and made it so that the centers of each of the three braces were 16 inches apart. This way, when I put all the screws in, I'm going directly into the framing members of the house, and this is going to be as sturdy as it possibly can be. Which is a good thing, considering all the weight that I'm about to put on it. Once all the screws are in, the project is done and ready to do its job keeping our kitchen neat and tidy. Yeah, yeah, not too bad. If you'd like to build this project yourself, check the link in the description below for my free plans. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.